Okay guys, so let's go ahead and jump right in. First things first, I would just like to say that it is imperative that you maintain a healthy and current quality sample library. Now I'm not going to harp on this for too long, but whatever relevance it is to you, whether you make commercial, cutting edge current music, or you make uh, maybe something from yesteryear or vintage, whatever those relevant samples are, just make sure that they're quality. I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but so many people just bite at the free sample pack in exchange for your email address, kind of whatever's dangled in front of them, bait. And um, a lot of the samples just aren't quality, and then people don't understand why they built their track from the ground up with mediocre samples, and now their mix doesn't sound right, or even before that, their arrangement isn't right, their mix isn't right, and their master is certainly having a lot of problems. So um, make sure that your samples are quality and that that is unwavering. There should be no question with that. Build your tracks with their first building blocks being complete and utter unquestionable quality. Same thing with your presets um, and, and the synths that you use. Um, plugins also for sure as well. So just keep that in mind. It should be quality. It's better to have less and have good quality than to have a ton disorganized, not knowing where to find things, and not being able to really tell anymore where the quality was and where the, um, the not-so-quality samples are. Keep it organized. Keep it quality you'll have good tracks. So let's jump right in. And you have to forgive me, I have a lot of problems with um, digestion and like um, heartburn. It creates a cough. I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but obviously I'm, I'm speaking a lot and teaching a lot. So if ever there's an awkward pause or anything like that, it's something I wish I didn't have to deal with and fight, but I do. And it's not going to stop me from uh, helping you guys out and living my dreams here. So just know that. Um, rename. Kick. We don't use a C because we're cool like that. We go into Instruments, and we're going to go into Simpler. Click and drag that over. We're going to click and drag, which, by the way, a lot of everything that I do is based on hotkeys and a lot of duplication and thoughts on efficiency. So learn your hotkeys. We insert a MIDI clip. You can right click insert MIDI clip or you can right click and do control shift M. So let's go ahead and get in the habit, control shift M. 1 16th is the grid. We right click, we go to 1 4th. C3, hit B on your keyboard, or go up here and toggle that. Click and drag across. Boom. There's your kick drum pattern. Going back to hotkeys, we're going to duplicate, so that's Control D, Control D. We're going to rename, clap. Now the pattern is the same as above, but what we're going to do is get rid of our pen tool by clicking B. We're going to hold down shift and we're going to click on the one and the three of every single bar. The one and the three, the one and the three, the one and the three. And we're going to delete. So now for every bar from one to two, you can see that the snare hits or the clap hits on the two in the four of every beat. It's a one-fourth grid, right? One bar is one, two, three, four, one-fourth. So two and the four is where your snare is going to hit or your clap's going to hit. Once again, we duplicate, control D, rename, control R, HH for hi-hat. We change our grid to 1 8th. Whoops. We select all, control A. We nudge that over to 
where the pattern needs to sit. We edit the notes down to 1 8 size. We control click over. There's our hi-hat pattern. Now, from here, we can do something a little different. We insert a drum rack. That drum rack will now house some different percussive elements. Control Shift M creates a MIDI clip. Let's keep our colors consistent since we're we're working with drums right now. And remember, these samples that we're about to put in here can change. They will change. Samples. Let's start from the top. Kick. 909. Classic. Sounds great. Nothing wrong with it. Let's just make sure. Sounds good. We go to clap. Drag it in. We go to hi hat. Drag it in. Now the strum rack here. What we're going to do? We're going to find a uh, rim shot. Um. Yeah, I guess that's fine. We'll search for some bongos. Maybe a conga. Fine. And uh, maybe a tom. a pattern in, double click, all of our sounds are right here now. I think what we're going to do is, okay, we're on 1 16th grid, so we're going to fill this in. I kind of have an idea. I like a tribal sound, so let's hear that. Cool. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And if my mouse would work, we select all, control, duplicate. And you can see over here, one, two, three, the fourth one is filled in. So with this pattern, one, two, three, the fourth one is filled in. It's just a way of keeping your pattern consistent. And I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to shift those notes over. Literally just pushing left or right arrow, nothing else. All right, conga. I'm thinking maybe we could do something along the lines of that. And bear with me, I'm traveling at a hotel. A lot of sounds. Killing me here. Alright, so let's give that a shot. Cool. Perfect that I think we could maybe do uh, well we could decorate where the current pattern is but then again what we could do could do that that's fine but then let's just see for the heck of it well we do have this rim shot here too See, what I'm doing is I'm looking for blank space. I'm looking for gaps, and I'm putting sounds where that silence or those gaps are. There's also nothing wrong with doubling up on sounds so that you're no longer filling in silence, but you're filling in the frequency spectrum. For example, this Tom 808 mid is pretty low. You wouldn't put another low sound right where it is, but what you could do is get a tambourine in here and put a tambourine 
on every other or whatever you'd want to do the last one of each bar where this tom 808 mid is um because that tambourine is high pitched so that tambourine being that it's high pitched and this tom is kind of mid low um the two will complement each other nicely because you don't have low on low or high on high it's it's now a layered sound that fills out the spectrum nicely um so i just you know as you see me kind of paint in these cubes here or squares rectangles i just want you to understand that i'm doing that uh looking for either silence or a good chance to layer so with that said we have that guy and i'm thinking what we might be able to do is something like that on every other one Something like that's fine. It's it's really about having fun and experimenting just as you would if you had bongos, congas, and a bunch of percussive acoustic instruments in front of you. Pretend you're on the beach and you've got a shaker, a bongo, a conga, a ukulele, you know, little transportable beachy instruments how would you arrange them how would you you know with your two hands bang out a pattern that is believable you know good thing to think about you could even if you don't want the two notes to overlap on the same area here try that just to keep things clean. And you'll see as we go through this, now we have a nice pattern, nothing stepping on anything else. The arrangement is full, but not busy. Um, and I like to think of it like a drummer. So what I like to do, I'm sorry, I like to think of it like a band. So what I like to do is I like to think you have a drummer and that drummer might have 10 things in front of them five drums and five cymbals or whatever the combination may be you have a bass player which is just one bass guitar you have a keyboardist which is obviously one person as well and maybe you have a guitarist that's also a singer so that person is is handling two things guitar and vocals thinking of it that way allows you to prevent the idea of overproducing especially on things that the listener is not going to hear or discover or miss anyways there's no need to spend half a decade working on one track and tweaking it to no end on things that are buried in the mix that the listener is not going to hear anyways i strongly urge you to monitor yourself on that do not get lost in production to the point where you're layering and layering and layering. And now you have, uh, you know, sort of this nice production, but you're off in no man's land of never finishing and over layering and obsessing over things like which conga or which tom is best. It's a month. Get a track done in a month. The sun will rise and shine again next month and we'll do it all over again. This track does not have to be everything to everyone right now. So, to build on that, let's get rid of this audio track for now. Let's do another drum track, and then I think we'll call it a day on the drums. Um, instruments, drum rack, drag it in, samples, hi-hats, sounds good. Let's see sounds good we're looking for tight hi-hats sounds good and yeah, maybe we could cheat and do that one too and you know what let's go for that one too because I like a little open hi-hat too all right click and drag over for bar control shift M let's keep our colors consistent since we're working with drums We're going to rename this, Control-R, we're going to name it HH2, 
because that's our hi-hat too. We'll name this one perks. All right, now, same thing as before. We have a ton of different hi-hats here. I think it would be cool to do something like that for this one. Almost a triplet kind of thing, but not quite. We're leaving room every other one for where the actual main hi-hat hits, so that way they don't step on each other. Not a real big deal, but every everywhere where that hi-hat hits, we want to leave room for the main hi-hat to hit. All right, I um, think we could do something like that with this. See how that ends up sounding. Oops, I'm lost. See how we're just filling in the gaps. Just filling in the gaps. Cool pattern. All right. Um, from here, let's just see. There's a little bit of bareness kind of in the second part, the two and the four of the bar. So let's do something like that. And, you know, all of this is just from experimenting and watching other people make tracks and thinking about where I want gaps to be filled in. So, not a lot of harm. Just move things around and have fun with it. Eighth note. I want the last of every bar to have an open hi-hat. Cool. Let's listen with that in the mix. Cool. Obviously, keep in mind that we'll mix all of this, but... Cool. All right. I'm happy with this. Now you can edit that any way you like. You can take some of that out if it sounds too busy, like get rid of the percussions. And you can hear that really opens it up and gives room for the kick. Um, but keep in mind too that we'll adjust the volumes on all of this in time. But for now, I think that's pretty cool. The only thing I would probably say to do, being that this is a four bar loop, I like to do something on the kick to keep the energy high, like on the last one here, something like that. Cool. All right, guys, that pretty much does it. it the name of the game is Hot Keys, duplicating, um, and basically taking your kick pattern and building down on that and adjusting it for other patterns that you'd use, like the um, two and the four on the clap, eighth notes for the hi-hat, and then decorating around that open space with percussion and um, other hi-hat. So that's it for now, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs>